Welcome to the reconstructed 103rd episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. So past tense, paranormal. My name is Jason Knight, host of the show, and with me, as always, is... Oscar Spector. Producer extraordinaire and podcast co-host. Well, listeners, as I mentioned, this is a reconstructed version of our episode 103 the bloop which was originally released on november 11th 2019 over a year ago oscar it's crazy i thought it was way later than that which is funny uh, i guess time is moving really slow for me <laughs> <laughs> it's covid time it's different maybe it's that maybe it's that or maybe it's my uh, i don't know my sense of time could be mm -hmm. so for over a year this episode has been bugging us, right? Mainly you, but yeah, it did bug me too. <laughs> My OCD. It yeah, it's no, true. no, it did bug me too. I never, never liked how it just, yeah, you know. Mm. It's one of those that you mm -hmm. wish you could just take off the books, but it was such a good freaking topic that right. you didn't want to delete it. But yeah, so when we originally recorded this episode, we had severe microphone issues. One of our, our brand new mics was damaged and we didn't catch it until basically that the episode had to be released and it, it just always bugged me because again, it was, it was a great topic. I had so much fun researching this bloop topic and uh, I wanted to redo it because we're on vacation right now and uh, it's supposed to be more relaxed. And I figured, well, <laughs> now is a great time to get uh, on top of this episode 103 and redo it with with better equipment no malfunctions right. so the listeners could hear how and that's it was a good idea to too be. i'm so glad we came up with this idea it's a good idea this topic idea yes yeah yeah it's fun now i do want to mention here uh i attempted to get the episode reworked let's call it reworked mm -hmm. okay there is a listener that we have in california He's a musician and fellow podcaster. Um, his podcast is called Life is Queasy, and that's K-W-E-S-I, Life is Queasy. This guy is the fucking coolest, and he listens to our show. And he contacted me. He's like, hey, if you ever need any work done, I'd be glad to just help, you know, for, for your show. Yeah. Um, so I said, you know. Really cool. Like, really cool, dude. Oh, super cool, dude. Uh, and I'm going to leave links to his podcast in the show notes. Um, but I said, you know, I have this one episode that's really bugged me. Is there anything you could do with it? So I passed him, passed him the file. And since it was over a year later, I only had our single master file where mm -hmm. both our voices were not independent. It was just one uh, MP3 file, right? So there's only nice. so much he could do with it, but he put a lot of work into it and he did improve your mic, Oscar. Right. Um, and I was going to release that for, for this episode that we're doing right now. Yeah. But when I went back and I re-listened to it, I noticed that I sounded like I was fucking hammered. And I Which was. You were. You were. I, I could hear myself like slurring words. I'm like, oh, what a scumbag. So, <laughs> so <laughs> queasy, brother. Uh, I'm not going to run your uh, edit, not because of your work at all. Uh, it's because of my own foolishness, uh, drinking too much before recording that podcast. I was embarrassed, to be honest. I'm being yeah. honest here. We, we decided to do a reshoot rather than using the old archival footage yeah. um, to put it in movie terms. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I, again, I just want to get back to Life is Queasy podcast. It, it's So it's a single guy who does sort of this skit. Oh, he's single, eh? Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. One individual who does <laughs> kind of this this skit type podcast where he plays all of these multiple characters that mm. and he tells short stories using all these multiple characters and he voices them all and they all have their own independent uh, personalities and attitudes and backgrounds and uh, ideas and beliefs 
and he mixes mixes it with such great sound effects. Um, it's it's just a great show. Life is Queasy, K W E S I. All of your uh, major podcast catchers, uh, you can find it, and I'll leave a link to the podcast in the episode show notes. So even though I'm not going to use his edits, I did want to give him a big plug on the show because he didn't have to do any work for us, and he did. So mm -hmm. love you, man. Right? Austin, yeah, so uh, <laughs> no, no, I didn't know you wanted me to respond right then, so I was just letting you do your thing. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a very good start, too, to our vacation. We These reheated episodes, obviously, we're not starting with a reheat or, like, where we're releasing the same exact uh, content, but uh, it's a good way to like, it's like fixing an old pothole before continuing forward, right? Kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it's a good way to start this, uh, this um, time free we have from uh, the research um, schedule that we're used to before. So yeah, it's a, it's a great way to start. And also like a good way to show people that, you know, we're still going to do these intros freshly. Like we're still recording fresh stuff. Technically right now we are. This is what it is right now. This is, yeah. Intro is unique to uh, December 2020, you know? So um, it's not like we have absolutely nothing. So, and I think this is a good way to also keep in touch with our fans um, by letting them hear our voices in current live form or live-ish form. And, you know, otherwise, so with that in mind, Jay, how you been lately? I've been, uh, been good, been good. We just uh, released a Patreon-only episode uh, sorry, we just recorded a Patreon only episode mm -hmm. I say, I haven't for <laughs> December. Uh, and it was on the Rendlesham Forest incident over in the mm -hmm. UK in 1980. Mm -hmm. What an amazing UFO story that was. And it led down some really, really fascinating rabbit holes um, outside of UFOs. Yes. So, you know, listeners, if you're not on our Patreon, you're really missing out. Patreon.com forward slash Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast, or just click the Patreon link in this episode show notes. So, you know, I was assembling that Rendlesham Forest episode. Uh, other than that, just getting ready for the holidays, man, trying to get all my shopping done. My credit cards are smoking in my wallet. Uh, you know, it is the <laughs> season, man. It is the season. It? Yeah, I did a lot of that too. Oh my God. I mean, I'm not going to give you a number, but I spent way more than I initially thought. And I'm not saying it's like, oh, how, woe is me. I chose to spend that money. Obviously, I really care about giving the right gifts to right people. I love doing that. That's all, it's all part of the thing that I love doing. Um, and I love giving it. As much You've as always been that way. It. As long yeah. as I've known you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm glad someone noticed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I have like this theme. With my gifts this year, I always try to do stuff like this. So I have this theme, and it's going to be great. It's, uh, I'm not going to spoil it because that will involve your gift a little. So, like, <laughs> shut up. Don't talk about it. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it's fun. And uh, other than that and the new brand new setup I have, I do want to mention that I have uh, successfully posted, broadcasted two more additional times from the last time we were on the air where uh, on our Twitch channel, which is SOS Chica Ghost, is Chica Ghost on Twitch. And uh, I, I did some uh, play, play, not playthroughs, I guess playthroughs or whatever. I played a game called <laughs> Control on it uh, two different times. But now that I ended that game, actually, uh, I started up on God of War and I have thoughts on um, maybe doing a horror movie next time. Uh, check nice. out our Twitter, guys, our Twitter handle, which is what, are, what is our Twitter at Chicago Ghosts. Thank you. At Chicago Ghosts, check our Twitter for updates where I will post um, when I'm gonna when I'm gonna broadcast next time. If you are interested in watching me uh, play along, and you guys can talk to me, of course, and I will I will have a lively chat with you all. Um, I would love to do that. First of all, secondly, and even if it's not a game, maybe we'll watch something together. I've been thinking of I'm rewatching The Leftovers right now. I could start there from the beginning. Not a big deal. I would love to watch any horror movie. A lot of different movies in my pantheon i would love to do a lot of that and i know that there's a way to do like synchronized um uh twitch watch parties with uh prime video amazon prime video there's a way to do it with that i haven't figured it out yet but i would be if, if people are interested i would do that with people too awesome. and that way we can all watch something at the same time actually synchronized and that could be fun i'm doing all that stuff so a lot of tuesday wednesday recordings so expect that kind of schedule okay those are my days off <laughs> yeah, we we actually had some listeners uh, tune in to Twitch and yes. join you, which is. Oh right, yes, that was his uh, right. Twitch name. Yeah. 
yeah. Uh, yeah, he joined up. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun. And obviously, I'll try to keep it themed to our shit. Honestly, like when I've got a war, it's not exactly themed to supernatural occurrence studies podcast, but it is in the sense of the lore and the mythology behind it. We talk we talk about that. We grace on that area here and there. Um, control is way more our alley, but God of War is not like out of the realm either. Um, nice. So yeah, expect stuff like that. I'm having fun with it. I want people to join in whenever they can or watch the playback because I think playback is uh, uh, available on our Twitch channel for up to two weeks before it disappears from Twitch. Ah, so, good. You know, we can always go back and check it out. Not a big deal. Just background watch me. No big deal. Whatever you got. So yeah, that's it. Love it. Thank you for doing that uh, for the listeners. Mm-hmm. It's a great way to stay in touch. And one of these days, I promise I'm going to join too. I'm going to jump on there. I can't. I can't wait to see this. And I'm going to say up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B A select, select, start, bitch. There's no B A S anymore. Damn. I don't think so. Anyway. Someone out there I, got I that. I guess on the switch, maybe. Yeah. Well, my son just got a switch, actually. There you go. Uh, someone out there caught my reference. Okay. Um, anything else been going on? Oh, uh, I mean, actually, going on? No, uh, not necessarily. I mean, some stuff that's kind of personal. Other stuff is just a. Uh, just getting up for Christmas. I'm a part of one white elephant and three secret Santas this year. Damn. Which is fun. Fun, fun times. I love that stuff. Wow. Um, one of them is with full of strangers. One of the secret Santas. One of them is family oriented. One of them is um, co worker, like people are, you know, at work. And then the white elephant with friends. So I we got all that stuff ready to go. And they're all kind of fun to, yeah, fun to think of. What I got. Uh, yeah. Other than that, just work and just hanging out with my gliders and, you know, researching on the side for the show, stuff like that. Just, you know, normal stuff. Chilling out, drinking a lot, a lot of eggnog lately. <laughs> eggnog. <laughs> I accidentally uh. got drunk on eggnog the other day. I drank an entire bottle of, entire bottle of uh, eggnog that I bought at a at a at a liquor store. I forget what what the was brand it. The was. Southern Comfort eggnog? No, I don't think so. It was uh, William something. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, someone out there already knows from that. Uh, but it said it was just eggnog, right? A bottle of eggnog, and I bought it, and then I drank it under under twenty hours, and I got drunk by accident on it. I didn't even know I was drinking through it that fast. What was a eggnog hangover like? It was I never get hangover. I didn't get hangover, but oh, I, I got up you. from my seat, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's when I realized I was drunk. And that's how much it snuck up on me. Wow! So I've been doing a lot of that. Yeah, that's I think that's one thing about people being at home uh, so much now is is that drinking's getting you know day drinking for example those hours are getting earlier yeah. and earlier for me. <laughs> are they not are they? unheard of for about one thirty two o'clock? At least have some wine or some mead next to me as I'm working. I don't yeah. know if I should say that. No, I mean, you, and then you I'll graduate to to whiskey. Right and by dinner time, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, really? gotta watch out. Gotta be really pretty careful. warm. Right. Uh, I do want to mention that we did receive a voicemail. Oh, uh, well, okay. it, it was it was excuse me a text on our Google uh, Voice line. Oh, okay. Um, that sorry, let me correct that. It was a text on our Google Voice line, um, and it's from one of our listeners, Pam Newsom, and she says, "Hi, Jason and Oscar. I love the show. I'm loving the serial killer shows. How many more will there be? How about the code being cracked for the Zodiac killer, Pam? Mm. So, Pam, thank you for contacting us." Uh, thank you for listening to the show. Yeah, you know, the serial killer episodes are are really fun to research. I can only do so much at a given time before it starts fucking with my head. Um, but I'm I'm thinking she's talking about the serial killer web we were spinning. And I yes. kind of put aside for a while. That is something I definitely have to pick back up in the new year. So, you know, listeners, Pam, uh, watch out for that. And as far as the Zodiac code being broken, I, I seen this in the news. And I'm a horrible paranormal podcast host because although i've seen it in the news i haven't dove in i haven't dove in yet to what code was cracked and what was said so give me a little bit of time to catch up on that that news story it just broke i think either this week or or late last week um and i will come back with with my comments because of course we covered the zodiac killer heavily uh in two episodes and we discussed all those codes and um, had some possible ideas and things so uh thank you for contacting us i will get back to everybody about my thoughts on the cracking of the zodiac code so i just wanted to mention that yeah, otherwise back to me too i want to know yeah oh you didn't hear about it no no i didn't I yeah nothing. yep i'm very yep. bad with new stuff i'm really i'm really bad with it you often come up to me like oh yeah today we're gonna talk about um i don't know uh, let's say roanoke 
I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but like, I have like, no idea of these basic things that a lot of people know. I know a lot of things, but when I research it, it's when I know. I don't know it before. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to talk about this horrible thing that happened in our, ver- our own fair city of, you know, Chicago. Like, fuck, I never heard of it. I've been to there, but I don't never, like, you never heard of this? Nope. All right. So, yeah, I can't yeah. wait. Well, when I get caught up, I'll catch you up. Mm-hmm. Other than that, man, I got nothing else. That's good. It's okay. It's a part of the intro. It doesn't have to be super long either. Yeah. Should we get into the contact info? Let's do it. The easiest way to contact the Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast is by going to our website, chicagoghostpodcast.com. From chicagoghostpodcast.com, you can get to all of our social platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Patreon. I hope we never listeners. How come? What's that? I hope we never move. I know, right? And we can't be the Chicago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have to redo every single intro. I mean, I never done. plan on moving. I know Lexi wants me to move eventually, but I don't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, so, listeners, if you haven't done so already, jump over to our Patreon channel and uh, give some support to the show for just $5 a month. You get access to Patreon only content like that Rendlesham Forest Incident podcast we're about to release. Um, and yeah, pledge your support for your favorite podcast. I don't know. Good. Done. Call Done. us. Text us. Chicago area code 872. Yeah, apparently he's 529 0767. So, you know how you can. This is not, I mean, I, I don't know where he got this text from this person, supposedly. I think. <laughs> what's her name? Fake McGeeson. Yeah, that's not a real person. I think their phone number doesn't actually work because it's not a real area code. The area code belongs to. I mean, you can only imagine, guys. Whatever, like that town in Seven. Remember the movie Seven? That city in Seven that doesn't exist, like a nameless city. That's the area code. Wow, so, that's a strange reference right there. I don't think it's that strange. If people got it, then we have an older crowd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a crowd our age anyway. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not real. I'm, I'm glad you texted someone. Someone did text. I think, I think Jay just picked up like a an alternate phone or something and just found this person talking about Zodiac. And decided to put it on the show. You it's not me. a real phone number, guys. You can't. It me. goes nowhere. All it does is bring you spam and like those uh, telemarketers and, and, and bad know. dreams. You don't want to do it. Well, it can lead to bad dreams because frustration and anxiety leads to <laughs> nightmares. Um, so yeah. Stay away. Well, how about I challenge the listeners? Call eight seven two five two nine zero seven six seven and see what happens. It's an ad. That's all it is. Do you it's get nightmares? A complicated ad. Uh, Oscar, what do you say we take a break? Mm-hmm. We fill our drinks and come back and get into the bloop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listeners, welcome back to the show. Well, the lights are turned down low, the ceremonial candle is lit, and the drinks are definitely flowing. Let's start this show. So, Oscar, Mm -hmm. tonight we are going deep, really deep. Everything has to be sexual with you, isn't it? (laughs) To the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. Now, you may not know this about me, but I love the ocean. When I was little, all the other kids wanted to be cops or firemen, and I wanted to be an oceanographer. I was fascinated with the ocean and the creatures that lived there. (laughs) I kept expensive saltwater fish tanks and a vacation at the ocean every chance I get. I could sit and watch the waves for hours on end. I can't fall asleep at night unless I'm listening to ocean sounds. Maybe it's because oh yes, right? You've you've experienced this. Oh yeah, I slept with Jay in many motel rooms, and I have to deal deal. Oh, and deal. I'm the one who always brings it to something sexual. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> how, uh, that was a, just a literal fact. We slept in motel rooms together. That's yes, all yes, we yeah. did. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because up to sixty percent of the human adult body is co- is composed of water. Our brain and heart are composed of 73% water. Our lungs are about 83% water. 
Our skin contains 64% water. Our muscles and kidneys, 79% water. And even our bones are watery, 31%. So maybe on some physiological level, my body's calling out to the water because I'm more than half water. So for me, the ocean is a beautiful thing, something serene and, and wondrous and part of me. But there are other people out there who are terrified of the ocean. Those who have a fear of the ocean suffer from something called thalassophobia, and their phobia could take on many forms. People who suffer thalassophobia might have an overall fear of the ocean, just one big overwhelming fear of that impossibly large, impossibly deep body of water. Other people might not have a fear of the overall ocean, but instead are terrified of large waves or being stuck in the ocean far away from land, or they might be terrified of the ocean's vast emptiness, or they may be petrified of encountering sea creatures or sea monsters, the things that lie beneath. After all, the ocean covers 70% of the Earth's surface, yet, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or what I'll refer to as NOAA for the rest of this episode, as of 2019, 80% of the Earth's ocean is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. 80%. And That's the average, it really is. And the average ocean depth is 12,566 feet, about 3,800 meters. It's said that we know more about and have gone further into space than we know about our own oceans. That's crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you think about it, we know hardly anything about the ocean or what lurks beneath the ocean waves deep down at depths that are incredibly difficult for man to get to areas that exert pressures between 3000 and 9000 pounds per square inch and areas that have never been touched by sunlight. And at least once or twice a year, we get news stories about some strange sea creature from these impossible depths watching ashore and baffling scientists as to what the creature is. Take, for example, the oarfish, known as the original sea monster. Oarfish can grow up to 56 feet long and are typically found at depths around 3,300 feet, so they're not seen by people very often. When the oarfish first started washing ashore, people thought they resembled the sea monsters that, according to legend and engraved prints dating back a half a century, would overturn ships and schooners. Now, of course, oarfish don't flip ships, but they are pretty weird looking. And when first discovered, no one knew what they were, but they were down there lurking the whole time. And I'll leave a link to this creature in the show notes. Listeners, make sure and check out the show notes for this episode. I have a lot of pictures there. Or how about in 2017, when a nasty-looking sea monster washed ashore in Texas after Hurricane Harvey? This creature, according to National Geographic, was likely a fang-toothed snake eel, typically found around 300 feet below sea. But notice how National Geographic said likely. Scientists aren't 100% sure this thing is really a fang-toothed snake eel. Yet there it was, dead on the beach for all to see. Once in a blue moon, a giant squid will wash ashore, like a 50-foot monster squid that was found beached in New Zealand in 2015. Now, on average, the giant squid is known to grow to 40 feet in length and lives as deep as 3,800 feet below sea, and they're rarely seen. In fact, even though we know they're down there and scientists have been looking to recover them or, or record them for years, the giant squid has only been captured on video twice. Once was in 2012 off the coast of Japan, and once in June of 2019 in the Gulf of Mexico. The two that were captured on video were about 20 feet long. This one that washed ashore in, in New Zealand, though, was supposedly 50 feet in length. But some experts believe there are squid much, much bigger than that in the ocean's depths. Now, the giant squid is to believe to be the source of stories about the Kraken, or the Kraken. Mm -hmm the ancient nemesis of sailors and pirates that would rise up from the deep and destroy ships with its massive tentacles and eat the ship's crew whole with its powerful beak. 
And again, I'll leave a photo to the giant that washed ashore in New Zealand. But you know, be aware, experts disagree as to whether or not this photo is actually real. But it sure looks real to me. I don't know. Listeners, let us know what you think. Contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. Yeah, and this also goes into something else. When you, uh, you know, I thought of the show since we did it the first time in November of 2019. And uh, one of the things I thought of, I don't know if I mentioned it back then, by the way. I don't know. I don't remember. You were drunk. I'm drunk today. So <laughs> it's a trade off. <laughs> Who knows? What's, I've been drinking literally straight this whole time. Um, anyway, uh, and the thing that, that, that strikes me as um, interesting and makes it more likely that this topic, that the show of today, is a realism. It's something that's really out there. Um, and that is that if you look at the domesticated animals on land, the cats, the dogs, the whatever, they all have a bigger, prehistorically huge predator versions of themselves. The saber-toothed tiger for the cat, right? And then for the wolf, we have dire wolves, right? We even talked about that in the Skinwalker episode yeah. um, and other type of stuff. Those did exist, rare to extinct, let's just say that, at this point. But man has never done that kind of thing on the sea. We haven't extincted anything. We haven't consumed anything or turned anything into a pet version of itself through many, many generations of different breedings or, or, or whatever they have to do to survive, meaning appeasing us, like dogs, right? Uh, being a companion, right? Uh, to us, like they had, they need us to survive. They don't fucking the sea don't need us to survive. You know, what I'm no, saying? that's like a good the, point. It, it is uncharted in more ways than one. In the way that we have, we have never been able to, other than obviously spills and littering and whatever, which you know, obviously is a big fucking problem. Big problem, um, and that's only on the surface, really. But besides that, we really don't leave a fingerprint on the ocean species and the species under there, under the water. We really don't, and. um Finding Nemo is just touches the the, the lightest <laughs> of surfaces, you know. So we can only imagine what um, what things out there that existed back when saber tooth tigers were around. They're still existing today because they haven't been hunted to death or they are um, not not been domesticated and whatever. That and that really kind of plays into this next point here. Um, mm -hmm. In in 1938. A species of fish thought to have gone extinct 65 million years ago. There you go. Called the coelacanth was discovered alive and well living in waters near the Comoros Islands off the east coast of Africa and in the waters of Sulawesi, Indonesia. The coelacanths live in a depth of around 2,300 feet and could grow to six feet in length and can weigh up to 200 pounds. Yikes. Now, at, at a depth of 2,300 feet, or 701.4 meters, the pressure being exerted onto an object is over 1,020 pounds per square inch. That's a shit ton of pressure. It's very hard for man to get down there to see these things. Hard and, and expensive. Right, very expensive. Very, very expensive. expensive. You need James Cameron money. Yeah, exactly. Right. Few people can do it, is my point. And they have to have the interest to do it. You know, Elon Musk, I mean, if his fascination was with the sea, he might already know a lot of this stuff, but his fascination, alas, is with the fucking space. Right. It's with outer space. So we won't know. We know less because of flights of fancy of humanity like that. We just never will know. You know? So interesting. It is interesting. It's like, it's almost like the luck of a weird draw. I mean, who knows when we'll actually pay attention down there? I mean, again, we, there are scientists, oceanographers, even oceanographer fantas fantasiers like yourself, Jay, um, that are studying it or whatever. But like I said, they're not nowhere near enough yet. You just don't know. No. 80%. 80%. If it was 50%, it's still way too much. Yeah. But it's 80. Um, and that's today, 2020, or roughly. Um, that's insane. It's insane to think about. Too it many is. variables. Too many X factors. There really is. It's, a, it's an incredibly hostile environment down there. Yeah, it's a jungle down there. <laughs> so my point in telling you all this is we really have no idea what creatures lie in wait down at the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, right? But that doesn't mean we aren't actively trying to figure it out, to your point, Oscar. you know, One way scientists try to gain a better understanding about what's going on in the ocean is by listening to the ocean. Through an array of underwater microphones called hydrophones, which are located throughout the world's ocean, scientists can listen to and record underwater acoustics. 
Now, examples of underwater acoustics can be sounds that come from biological life, like whales and dolphins. It could come from seismic activity, like underwater earthquakes or underwater volcanoes erupting, or from icebergs breaking up. Then there's the sounds of waves and water currents. Of course, there's man-made sounds like military sonar and the sounds of ship traffic. The ocean really is a noisy place. And actually, let's listen to some common underwater sounds recorded by these hydrophones. Now, Oscar, <laughs> you know what's coming here because I mm -hmm. hit you with this in November 2019. I've yep. got a lot of samples for you to cut in. Uh, listeners, so please turn up the volume and let's zen out to some ocean sounds. Now, first, I'd like to play samples of some common biological sounds. This first sample is the underwater vocalizations of dolphins. And here are the underwater vocalizations of humpback whales. Now those were examples of common biological sounds. Now let's hear some geophysical sounds. This next sample of underwater is of underwater seismic activity. When you listen to this clip, listen for this sputtery static-like sound. That's believed to be the sound of an underground plate shifting or cracking way deep under the ocean floor, which caused an underwater earthquake. Now this is the sound of an iceberg running aground. And this is how waves sound underwater. And finally, let's listen to some man-made underwater sounds. Here's a hydrophone recording of military sonar. And here's a recording of underwater sound caused by ship traffic. Underwater sounds like the ones you just heard are, recording using three, are recorded using three factors, temperature, salinity, and pressure. So if you have warm, salty water, like say the waters of the South Pacific Ocean, sound will move faster because warm, salty water molecules have more energy and they could vibrate and transmit sound wave faster. And the best acoustics come from the deep sea as the immense pressure of the deep sea 
forces sound waves to move faster through the warm, salty water. Okay. Now, in 1997, researchers listening for underwater volcanic activity in the South Pacific Ocean recorded a strange, powerful, extremely loud sound on hydrophones that were over 3,000 miles apart from one another. This sound originated at the coordinates 50 degrees south latitude, 100 degrees west longitude, a GPS location in the South Pacific Ocean, which is about 2,000 miles off the coast of Argentina and about 4,000 miles off the coast of Christchurch, a city in South Island, New Zealand. The sound lasted about a minute, and it grew in intensity as it traveled. It was something never heard before and has since been given the very funny name, the bloop. Hmm. Now let's listen to the bloop. In this first sample, which I took right off Noah's website, the bloop sound is sped up 16 times its original speed, and the sound is played twice. Now, Oscar, could you please roll the bloop? Yep. It might not sound like much to us, but to scientists at NOAA, that right there was a very big deal. Now let's hear the bloop recording at its original speed. weird, right? This bloop sound is something totally different and totally unique. And for the sound to be heard over 3,000 miles, whatever created the bloop had to be huge. And it drove scientists crazy trying to figure out what was big enough to cause such a massive underwater sound. Now, of course, theories abound as to what caused the mysterious bloop. Was it ship engines? fishing boat winches, or a secret underwater military test, like maybe a bomb? Well, we heard samples of what ship sounds and military sonar sound like. They definitely were not a match to the bloop. And the U.S. Navy said they had absolutely no tests happening in the area where the bloop was recorded. With those theories out the window, scientists turned their attention to a biological being responsible for creating the bloop. Generally, low-frequency sounds like the bloop come from a very large source. For example, in the animal world, the lowest frequency underwater sounds are going to come from the largest animals in the ocean, namely blue whales or fin whales. Blue whales are known to be the largest species to have ever lived on Earth, growing up to 105 feet long and weighing up to 200 tons. And the blue whale can project sound up to 1,000 miles. The problem is, the bloop sound was projected over 3,000 miles, much, much further than the largest known living creature on the planet could project. Some scientists speculated that whatever made the bloop sound must be an incredibly massive, undiscovered ocean creature. And in 2002, when a NOAA researcher named Dr. Christopher Fox announced to the public that the sound was likely caused by something biological, an as-of-yet undiscovered ocean creature, the public went wild with conspiracy theory and the idea that a real-life Lovecraftian Leviathan could actually exist in our oceans. And I specifically use the word Lovecraftian because the location where the bloop originated, again at 50 degrees south latitude, 100 degrees west longitude in the South Pacific Ocean, that location screams out to fans of famous American horror author H.P. Lovecraft. In what is arguably Lovecraft's most popular work, a short story called Call of Cthulhu, which was first published in 1928 in a magazine called Weird Tales, Lovecraft describes a lost sunken city named Rolia, located, according to Lovecraft, 
in the South Pacific Ocean at the coordinates 47 degrees, 9 minutes south latitude, 126 degrees, 43 minutes west longitude. Now, in Call of Cthulhu, Lovecraft explains that Relia is a sunken city filled with corpses and is home to an amoral sleeping leviathan named Cthulhu. According to Lovecraft, Cthulhu is a part of a powerful, powerful pantheon of gods, which he refers to as the Great Old Ones. This particular Great Old One, Cthulhu, is said to lie in a death-like slumber beneath the Pacific Ocean in his sunken city called Relia. Lovecraft describes Cthulhu as being gigantic, hundreds of meters tall, with a huge octopus-like head with an unknown number of tentacles surrounding its mouth, and its body is scaly and rubbery looking. Cthulhu is described as having webbed human looking arms and legs and gigantic claws on his hind and forefeet. It has a rudimentary pair of wings on its back, and it's said that people go mad just looking at Cthulhu. Now, the coordinates Lovecraft gives as being the location of Cthulhu's underwater city of Relia is located in the real ocean location scientists refer to as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility, otherwise known as Point Nemo. In other words, the point in the ocean that's furthest from land. Now, Point Nemo is interesting because it truly is the most remote location on Earth, as Point Nemo is surrounded by a thousand miles of ocean on all sides. It's a place that is so far from civilization that a person floating at Point Nemo is closer in proximity to astronauts in space than they are other people here on the earth. In fact, it's highly unlikely a human has ever been to this very exact location in all of human history. Isn't that crazy? That is very nuts. It's, it's an impossible thing to wrap your mind around. Not impossible, obviously, but it feels like it is. It, yeah, it, it really does. That one point that no one has ever been to that's closer to space than it is to people on earth. Man. Yeah, it's it's. I'm trying to think of an example that can, um, or uh, yeah, an example of something to, you know, make it like um, even more feasible, like something like, like uh, an analogy or something. But obviously, I, I don't, I can't think of one. But um, it's hard. To th- it, it is hard. It is. It's also daunting, and this is why I fear. I don't. I'm not afraid of the ocean. I know you mentioned this earlier about people having a certain affinity to the ocean or the opposite. I don't fear it, but I mean, I fear it a lot, but I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have, like, I can go into the ocean, my point. I, okay. you know, but like, yeah, I have a, a natural, like, I'm going to be like, I need to be ready for the ocean. <laughs> like I have a, a fear of it the way you would, if you were into a forest and you meet a bear, like, you know, obviously you fear, respect the bear, walk away, you know, um, kind of like that, because this kind of talk is where like, man, you can't catch me in there. <laughs> in the of fucking nowhere unless i have like a lot of like um uh safeguards you know not yeah and i'm not afraid of the ocean but mm-hmm. being in a spot like point nemo yeah, yeah. terrified that terrified. that has to be horrible at night just the blackest black you've ever seen dude I not knowing what's below you that. you're fucked makes you think of like life of pi right but not as fantastical or um there's oh, a good movie, movie. Uh, good there's movie, a movie like this. Uh, there's a lot of movies like this by the open water and shit like that. But there's this one movie with Robert Redford. I forget the name of it, though. And it's driving me a little nuts right now. I don't remember. But it's not called, like, Capsize or something stupid. It's called something else. But anyway, he's he's a, he's an expert uh, yacht. Yachtsman? Whatever, whatever. He has a yacht. He's in the middle of the ocean. He's out traveling by himself. And then things start happening to his yacht. And that, an incident happens where, like, in the middle of the ocean... He is stranded, Ooh. and then it's about him figuring out how to get out, essentially, and it becomes like a survival story, not on, not unlike Castaway, but there's no island. It's mm. just him in the ocean, and it's um, without being purposely terrifying, without like churning up the, the sound design or any, no effects. It just does a really good job of showing you how he's like a little dot in the middle of all this. Like, yeah, exactly. You really get that feeling, I think, at some points. It's Point Nemo, man. Mm -hmm. Now, Point Nemo was discovered in 1992, so fairly recently, right, by a survey engineer named H. Lucatella. 
Lucatella located the point in the ocean that was farthest away from any land using a computer program called Hippocris, along with GPS satellites, which calculated the coordinates that were the greatest distance from three equidistant land coordinates. And as it turned out, Point Nemo, the literal middle of nowhere, is a coordinate. It's not a landmass, just a GPS coordinate in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean at GPS location 48 degrees, 52.6 minutes south latitude, 123 degrees, 23.6 minutes west longitude. This location lies exactly 1,670 miles from a trio of land dots or land masses. And those land masses are the Pitcairn Islands to the north of Point Nemo, uh, one of the Easter Islands to the northwest of Point Nemo, and Mayher Island, part of Antarctica, to the south of Point Nemo. Now, I can totally picture an ancient god in its creepy city living underneath the waves in the most remote location on the planet, can't you? Yes. <laughs> Not only is Point Nemo the most remote place on the planet, it's also the location where most autonomous spacecraft and satellites are sent to die when they re-enter our atmosphere. Less likely to harm any humans if you crash these things into the mo most remote place on Earth, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, no one knows for sure, but it's believed that 250 to 300 pieces of space debris rest in the depths of Point Nemo. One, one of the largest being... Uh, the Russian Mir space lab, 120 ton <laughs> space lab, which was brought down and laid to rest at Point Nemo in 2001. Now, Point Nemo is located in what's called the South Pacific Gyre, an enormous rotating current that actually prevents nutrient rich water from flowing into that specific area. Without any food sources, it's impossible to sustain life in this part of the ocean. And therefore, Point Nemo is called the least biologically active reason, region of the world's oceans. So when scientists recorded the bloop coming from this area void of any significant ocean life, obviously they were besides themselves wondering what the hell it could be. And what's really crazy is that half a century before the discovery of Point Nemo and the recording of the bloop, H.P. Lovecraft placed his Cthulhu city, Rolia, in the South Pacific Ocean at coordinates 47 degrees, 9 minutes south latitude, 126 degrees, 43 minutes west longitude, which are astonishingly close to the coordinates of Point Nemo and to where the bloop was recorded. I wonder, like, does anyone ever, like, try to figure out what kind of uh, research as a writer at the time? uh lovecraft might have done to hmm. you know what i'm saying because uh this was discovered in 92 right nemo yeah yeah but obviously you know, Lovecraft was did, wrote that shit decades beforehand right and um and obviously it had been dead i think by then probably um not sure when he died but yeah. probably most likely at least retired or not writing whatever um and uh it makes me wonder as to how it feels like something you, a writer would research to 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 cement their story with some realism yeah but having discovered it before the scientists did you know and the bloop being recorded right and the bloop being recorded i mean like i guess if you think of it as logical as you can you can imagine like the the most uh the le the, le the least human infested you know area in the world probably has um the most exotic creatures roaming free, like, you know, being free there, right? The idea, maybe that notion came into him. I can, I can buy that as a fiction writer, kind of like going there. But that, those coordinates, though, that specific, that, 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 that close. I know. To the point Nemo is what makes me wonder, like, what, I mean, I guess he must have just, I mean, can you just look at a globe back then and just figure that out? No, right? You can. I, I mean, don't. it was uncharted, right? Well, yeah. Maybe, Definitely. Uh, I don't, or maybe not. I don't know. All we would know is there's a there's an ocean there. Right. You know, we would know the the, the science behind a, a point Nemo, you know? Yeah. It's funny that he 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 his uh his creature, the Cthulhu creature, um rested in the same place that Nemo is. It's I know. Crazy. 
Yeah. And that's the thing, the, the fact, that fact right there, what you just mentioned, leads people to speculate, some people, that Point Nemo really is home to a yet undiscovered creature of some sort, a monstrous creature capable of projecting sound 3,000 miles underwater, creating the bloop, in other words. So was the bloop the real call of Cthulhu? Now, probably not, right? Since the bloop was recorded in 1997, scientists have been hard at work trying to figure out exactly what caused the mysterious sound. And they now believe the bloop is actually a recording of an underwater ice quake. The bloop is how an iceberg cracking and breaking away from a glacier sounds underwater. Thanks, global warming. Mm -hmm. And if you take the sound we played of an iceberg running aground, and let's insert that here once again so you remember. and we place it next to the bloop at normal speed, they sound kind of similar, don't they? I'd say similar, but not exact. And not all scientists agree that ice is the culprit. So really, the mystery remains as to what, with 100% certainty, caused this strange sound. It's fun to think about an unknown massive creature lurking in the depths of our ocean in the most remote section on the planet, isn't it? Or maybe H.P. Lovecraft was onto something with the Call of Cthulhu. We just don't know. And believe it or not, the bloop isn't the only strange underwater sound that has baffled scientists and led to wild speculation as to its origin. Here's another recording captured on March 1st, 1999, by scientists at NOAA on hydrophone. This sound is called Julia, and the recording we're about to play has been sped up 16 times. Oscar, could you play Julia? Now, Julia lasted for about 15 seconds and was loud enough to be, to be heard over the entire Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, which is an array of moored autonomous hydrophones used to listen to parts of the Pacific Ocean between 20 degrees north latitude and 20 degrees south longitude. This distance is thousands of miles. So again, just like the bloop, whatever made Julia had to be big, really big. And once again, scientists blame Julia on an iceberg that ran to ground somewhere in Antarctica. As scientists believe Julia originated from somewhere between Bairnsfield Strait and Cape Adare, both located off Antarctica. Now here's where the real fun comes in with Julia. There's a leaked classified photo, and I'll leave a link to this photo in the show notes, supposedly taken by a NASA satellite, the Apollo AA-35, which shows this massive shadow of something in the waters of Cape Adare at the time Julia was recorded. If this shadow can be proven to be from a sea animal, this would be the biggest goddamn sea animal ever recorded, a mm. sea creature of absolutely gigantic proportions. Now, here's the thing. I tried to research the Apollo AA-35 satellite to see if it's a real thing, and I couldn't find a single reference to it unless it was attached to the classified Cape Adare shadow picture. To me, that's pretty suspect. Unless AA-35 is a classified satellite, then it makes sense. I, I wouldn't find information on it. I don't know. The shadow picture is interesting to say the least, so who knows? And again, check the show notes to see uh, the, the Cape Adari shadow photo. Now, here's another mysterious sound recorded on hydrophones called the train. 
which was also recorded in Cape Adare on March 5, 1997, on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, two years before Julia was recorded, emanating from the same general location. Oscar, could we roll that? Now, once again, scientists from NOAA blame this sound on breaking ice. And finally, we'll listen to an underwater recording called Upsweep. Now, what's interesting about Upsweep is that since NOAA first recorded this strange sound on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array in August 1991, the exact same sound keeps occurring seasonally, peaking in the spring and fall. The upsweep consists of narrow bands of upsweeping sounds of several seconds duration each. Scientists believe this sound comes from underwater volcanic activity, located near 54 degrees south latitude, 140 degrees west longitude. But they have yet to pin down exactly what's causing it, or exactly why it happens seasonally. Here's the upsweep sped up 20 times. Oscar, could you play that? Yes. Volcanic activity, huh? Sounds more like the mating calls of some crazy big-ass sea creature, if you ask me. But what do I know? Now, here's something that happened fairly recently that just may lend credence to the massive underwater creature theory. And this event is what gave me the idea for this episode, actually. Oscar, what if I told you an entire underwater research station recently disappeared without a trace? Because it's true. Was it next to the Lost Island by the, uh, <laughs> what's the name of that company in the Lost uh, series? Oh, um, Dharma. Dharma. The Dharma Initiative? Is <laughs> oh, Dharma maybe. Initiative Lab or Umbrella Corporation Lab? No, this is a real thing. It, it, it happened in the Baltic Sea on August 21st, 2019. A large underwater monitoring station called the Bonkins Eck Observatory, which was used to gather important scientific data about the surrounding sea suddenly stopped sending transmission to the station's managers at the Geomar Hel Helmhold Center for Ocean Research, Kiel. That's hard to say. Yeah, it is a little hard to say. <laughs> this was an important, very expensive piece of equipment. It was about the size of a car, and it collected valuable data about water temperature, nutrients, salinity, the speed of water flow, and concentrations of chlorophyll and methane in the southwest Baltic Sea. In other words, priceless data for researchers. So when it suddenly stopped sending data, divers were dispatched to figure out what happened to the transmission. When divers got down to where the station was supposed to be, 1.1 miles off, offshore and 72 feet underwater, much to their astonishment, the entire station was gone, vanished. And the only thing left was a shredded transmission cable and some drag marks that only went on for a short distance and then disappeared. Now, the research station sat in a restricted research-only section of the Baltic Sea, off the northern coast of Germany. Leisure boats, leisure ships, merchant ships, fishing vessels, they're not allowed in restricted area. So the idea of theft was thrown out pretty early in the investigation. Yet theft either on purpose or accidental, like the station got caught up in an, an illegal fishing vessel's anchor or its netting, seemed to be the only logical explanation. Massive storms and heavy currents were also ruled out because the research station had been anchored to the sea floor without incident for over two years prior to its disappearance. And there was no evidence of such violent underwater activity recorded by the station prior to it going offline, right? Right. That, that only leaves marine animals as a possible culprit. But that idea, too, was thrown out due to the research station's size and weight and the fact that it was securely anchored to the seafloor. Now, the station consisted of two racks, 
one weighing 550 pounds and the other weighing 220 pounds. The racks included a frame holding the station's power supply, probably another one or 200 pounds along with heavy cabling connecting the station to the coast, easily a few hundred pounds, and a frame to hold the, the sea monitoring sensors, again, a hundred pounds or so. So here we have this station, the size of a car, and easily weighing just shy of a ton, and it's anchored to the ocean floor, and it was removed with what had to be great force, leaving no trace, save for the shredded communication cable. What the hell? Suddenly, when I read about Bonkin's Eck Observatory and the disappearance of the research station, in my opinion, the bloops and the Julias and the upsweeps could easily be something more than shifting ice or volcanic activity. Maybe an unknown Leviathan or Leviathans really do live in the deepest, most remote parts of our oceans, and their activities are finally being recorded by advanced underwater technologies, like the hydrophones. I would love to think that that's true, but we just don't know. It's right. still a mystery. Yeah, this whole thing is a mystery. What do you think of its size? Do you believe it's its that size? What, the, the that creature? Could be, could be, yeah, right. I mean, I know you're in favor of, uh, right? I assume you're in favor of it being a creature of some kind. Oh, yeah, definitely. 80% of the world. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we discover new species all the, or like alternate evol evolved versions of species all the time from crickets to, to whatever this is. So I'm not surprised there happens all the time. Ecosystems change radically, and, and therefore uh, new species emerge. It, it's, it's a, well, nature is a wonderful, fickle thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, what do you, how, how big really do you think it is? Or do you really think it's unstoppably big? It could be as big as you can imagine. I mean, just by the science alone and how sound moves underwater, how the largest things make the, the biggest sounds down there, mm -hmm. this sucker would have to be, I don't know, Empire State 600 Building? 600 feet long. Okay. Something like that. Under, maybe just shy of 1,000 feet long. 1,000 feet long, man. I can't imagine that in my head right now. I can't. And, and the girth on the thing, who knows, you know? Oh, yeah, God. No, I have no idea. I would love for it to be that, you know? Yeah. Um, and then explain to me how this observatory was just gone. Um, yeah, it got your <laughs> pedoed. I guess I'll call it up. Geppettoed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, swallowed up, right. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. Because you think mm -hmm. the boats would have been seen or their activities causing ocean currents to behave Underwater in such a way that the, <laughs> that the station would have recorded, right? Yeah. Um, if there was some underwater stuff going on, the station would have recorded that too. But it didn't. It was reporting and then it wasn't reporting. So yeah. something drug it away. Something and drug Dharma it away. Dharma have never provided good insurance. Either. Dharma did not provide insurance, no. no they, were, they were just like, oh, no, let's just set fires, guys. Let's just blow the lid off volume cars. Don't worry about insurance. <laughs> um, just worry about that massive smoke monster. I have a, I have a, so I have a, stu a possible, a potential stupid question here. Uh-oh, yeah. Um, because I just, uh, I, I am not up on this material. <laughs> you know, my education does not. It has bounds at that point, has limits. Um, so uh, let's let's just uh, give an example of like um, uh, Iceland, um, or the, the or maybe a bigger land, though. the United States, the United States, right? Uh, this huge mass of land. Now, yeah. does that land, the land that we're on, does it track and go as deep as to the core of the Earth, or is there like a cutoff with water? Or the sea underneath at some point. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are we a giant island where there's a lot of water beneath us? Or does it go directly through the crusts of the layers? And at some point, it just goes to the center of the earth without being in the sea. I wonder if it's different all over the world, you know? Yeah, okay. I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. Maybe someone out there knows the answer. I mean, right. I, would, I, don't, I don't know if that's a stupid question or not. Yeah. I would venture to guess that it's just stone and, and rock and lava right. until you hit the core but i remember seeing the diagrams as a kid in earth science class or right right there. right but is that i don't i've never figured that with the ocean stuff you know i just never i never thought of that with ocean in general like is it are we married into it like there is a bedrock of ocean before we get more ground and so on and then the layers begin 
or are we just one giant landmass and the oceans around it? Mm. The water. I don't know. I mean, we have underwater rivers and lakes. That's, That's proven. That's I mean, true. look when we covered uh, Lake Vostok. Lake Vostok. I was going to mention that earlier. Right. right a massive uh, ocean under there. I mean, the fact that we found like 65 million old germs and microbes on there because right. of the ice keeping it sealed in there is already a marvelous thing to discover. Um, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah. Um, obviously microscopic. But. So I, I'll bet you, I could probably almost say with certainty, yeah, there's, there's ocean somewhere between us and the core. Mm -hmm. Gotta be, gotta be. I don't know. Maybe there's a scientist who listens to the show and they could let us know for sure. <laughs> or a geologist. Well, I, I assume a, a scientist or geologist of some sort who would, who would, who would be listening to the show right now. Uh, we're probably listening it for fun, not for any kind of research or, <laughs> yeah. or any truism or like hard facts. You know, we're not the true copy of fucking geology, but uh, but we try our best. We do. So, yeah, if there best. is someone out there uh, who knows uh, an inkling of this kind of thing, uh, write, a, write us in. I would, yeah, I would love to know that kind of question too. I think it's a stupid question. Only because I don't think I it's feel, stupid. I feel like I should know the answer, but I just don't know. I like cool. your answer though that it might vary from like. Landmass to landmass, maybe Australia is like that. Maybe Australia is more of a one giant island versus South America, which is like straight down to the core rock. Right, something like that. Right, right, right. And God knows if there is oceans down there trapped, what's in them? Mm -hmm. And if there's a way for creatures to get in and out of and the out. trapped ocean versus you know the right. oceans we're in, uh, who knows? Who knows? All Possibilities right. are endless, and that's what's fun about this topic. Yeah, you no, know, that's what I love about these topics. Mm. Topics like this one, or like, like others, like I mentioned many times before, the thirty third parallel, for example. It yeah. opens up a lot of ideas to what is actually out there, what is actually possible, um, and all on Earth. You know, I'm not even saying space; just our own, our own little area here. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Our own little blue rock. Yeah, a little blue rock. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad this is re-recorded. Well, there's um, some horrible like mistake in a recording <laughs> process that we're going to discover. I think I, I tripped over a couple words, but hey, no, it's you, you, you 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you did fine. No, I didn't hear any slurring. So I Good. Think... I purposely stayed sober for this one. Good. I, I wasn't going to have a repeat. Because so, <laughs> I wanted to keep up the tradition of one of us being drunk for this particular topic. It's so. a topic that plagues us. Yes. Well, very good. Um Listeners, please, you know, keep listening to the feed. We're going to have a reheated episode uh, next release uh, with a new intro. Uh, so something old, something new. Mm -hmm. uh, our next fully researched scripted episode uh, will return on February 15th, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, we wish everybody, because this is coming out before Christmas, we wish everybody a happy holidays or a Merry Christmas, whichever you prefer. Happy New Year as well. Kwanzaa. Crazy Kwanzaa. Um, so yeah, Oscar, what do you say you, uh, take us home? Let's do it. I mean, he definitely increased your volume, but it's still, I probably would have released it if I didn't sound like I was slurring my words half the time because I was drunk. And it's, Were you drunk? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the you night I was drinking. Sure? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That was the night I was drinking straight whiskey. And mead, I think. Uh, yeah, tonight I have uh, tonight on uh, today's episode we are sponsored by eggnog, purely made at your own home, followed by peanut butter and mead, mead. Yes, peanut butter and jelly mead, homemade eggnog. Oh, jelly. you're drink. Oh, you're doing it too. 
You have the the mead. What? Yeah, the mead right here. You broke into it. Nice. But I am looking at houses in Florida. What? Why? What? Because I want to live you'll there. Never, you'll never meet that guy. You, you'll never meet that girl. That girl? What do you mean? From the Florida Project. You'll never meet her. Oh, oh yeah. You'll never, you'll never yeah, meet her. Yeah, my honey doesn't post on Instagram anymore. What? I wonder what happened to her. I died we, in that We were house. Instagram friends. <laughs> Probably. Were you with us when we went to see that place? Uh, no, no, I wasn't with you. I was, but, it uh, was me and Katie then. I couldn't remember if it was. Uh, I never went to Florida with you. Why would I have thought we were all there together? I don't know. I think you had a fantasy. Maybe. Me and Katie saw that hotel, though. Yeah, yeah. She sent me pictures from that day. I remember that. And she, and she said, I remember her. I remember that day because uh, she she was like, Jay told me to send you this for some reason. <laughs> she <laughs> had no like idea. That. No, and I was like, oh, I recognize the house. It's from that movie. And she's like, whatever. Yeah, that purple, nasty-ass hotel. Right, purple. Like right purple. down the street from the Magic Kingdom. Right. Uh, but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at I'm looking at houses there. Uh, yeah. Found one. Found one yesterday. That was one house off of the ocean, one house. So like the person in front of me, right? And then, but the ocean's next. And then the ocean. That's what I want. That is my me and Katie's goal, is to be on the water one day. You could just uh, buy like a ramshackled, probably cheap, lighthouse. <laughs> fix it up you know they're they they do offer yeah because you, lighthouses are useless for the most part now you could find it you can find it it is out there yes and thermal imaging you don't need lighthouses nearly as much right it can cover i mean they just they just need like a smaller version of it and and they keep a lot of the the old ones for a lot of different reasons some of them for historical like i think purposes. majority would be historical Honestly, but, but, you, but you'd be surprised how many times I've heard, not granted, didn't look it up or anything. I've heard of uh, lighthouses being just like abandoned buildings in the middle of the city. They're just there. Man, you can probably buy it. You know, you could probably get in on it. That would and be live awesome. in a Wes Anderson world where you just have this like, <laughs> you know, thing going on. And then you have to play Bioshock 3, of course, because lighthouse is a big deal in that movie oh. uh, game. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, that's that would be great. I mean, you want to just move farther and farther away. That's what you want. Not, no, I mean, my heart's in the Midwest, of course, but Closer to be to the equator, you want you want just a constant heat, huh? I just want to be by the ocean. That's what I want. Yeah, we want to be by the far ocean. from that. We're definitely. Far from that. <laughs> and this guy, so he was one house. So his, the guy in front of him had a two story house, mm -hmm. like ours here, and then it was literally the beach. There's the ocean. So what this guy did, who's selling the home. On top of his two-story house, he built a deck on top of, of the house. That's good. On a pitch, on a one of these. They call them like a widow's walk. Sure. And he built a real nice deck up there. So you just sit up there, and it's like your neighbor in front of you doesn't even exist. You just look right at the water. It's yeah. It was beautiful. But it's, yeah. you know, three by, what was it? Three bedroom, two and a half bath. We have five bedroom, one and a half bath. But so... <sighs> He was asking five hundred thousand. He's asking five hundred thousand for it. So I said, you know what? It's time to start getting a little more serious. So I, I ran the mortgage numbers with a mortgage company. Yeah. And it turns out, a half a million dollar home, mm -hmm. is actually affordable. Like if I put a big down payment down, I could actually afford it. Wow. It's un. It's. So that solidified it in my mind more that this this is an attainable goal. So I'm kind of excited about that. Don't know when, but it's affordable. I could do it. The only thing I would say is that maybe wait until we can hang one more time before you leave. <laughs> oh, no, dude. It's going to be a little while first. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I don't know how long COVID will actually last. Oh. Or a show ago. I think I mentioned it then. Um, and it's weird. And I don't know how you'll take it, but it'll be fun. It'll be a fun reaction no matter what. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> is that... Uh, Lexi and I are opening. You're open for business. Yes. To other. Yep. Individuals. Yes. Sort of thing with, with them. So I'm sorry if I ruined your bubble. You did not ruin anything. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, hey, hey, man. If it... I told you to tell you not to like, I don't know, be the first person to ever tell you this. Uh, oh. I'm, not, I'm not winning trophies here. You know? <laughs> I don't know. In my book, you guys are. I mean, it's I know you're. Cool. I know you're like um, 
I mean, you you know a lot of people. <laughs> You've been through a lot of shit yourself, so it's not like <laughs> you have quite a lot of trophies I don't have. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's fine. Um, but it's not for for each. It's 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 independently though. What do you mean? So like, I, I find my own. She finds her own. Okay. You know so we're not bringing someone in for the both of us. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so that is yeah, different. Yeah, we're, we're opening it completely. Yeah, it's open relationship, right? What? Yeah, we're trying. We're trying that. So is and she it, going yeah. female or male? She wants to go mainly female. Okay, good. Uh, mainly female. Um, not to say that there is no males in the horizon for her. <gasps> um, we have a few. We have, we have ground rules, of course. We have ground oh rules to keep, uh, okay. to keep the just any potential sanity because. While we have opened it up for about three weeks now, um, nothing has happened yet. It's not like we had someone ready, or it's not like you know we are that good at hitting on people. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> um, so whatever. The point is that it's open, but it's not like it's not field tested. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying it's all in, in the stages of uh, planning still, or whatever if you want to call it. It's a terrible metaphor. But so anyway, so uh, she uh, obviously I would never suggest this. She, she suggested it be, because you know her history about his jealousy and stuff. Um, and I don't know if you know about me, but I'm much more of a polyamorous kind of guy in general. I've always been open to this idea. I just never like I don't like need it in my life. I just something I've always believed in personally. I'm not like huge just monogamy kind of guy. But she always was. And most people are in general. And if I want to live in this world, I'm going to have to like do that, you know? Yeah. So. Um, she, she, she suggested it uh, under two things. One, that she wants to try a girl, like soon, like soonish, right? Okay. Um, probably after the holidays for her, because she can literally say yes whenever. Like, not because she's just a girl, although that is in part of it, but because she's beautiful and young. So, like, she gets so many replies already. Wow. Yeah. And she has, like, I think she's just on Tinder, only Tinder right now. Um, whereas I, this visage, <laughs> visage, visage. This whole visage. I'm much better in person. Jesus Christ! I was such a hot <laughs> item in the <laughs> thousands because I met people in person. Um, so, and unfortunately, everything's online. So, and yeah. I'm trying to learn the ropes online. It's kind of complicated. Anyway, so wow. the second reason she wanted to do it is because I'm an insatiable demon in the sack, asshole type. So, like, I need, I don't need, but I really want, want a lot. So. Um, and I like different experiences too. So she just like opened it. She's like, I trust you completely. I don't have to, I'm not jealous anymore. So we can do this now. And she's, I'm like, all right, let's try it. Wow. After many discussions, mind you, we, then we decided. I told okay. her, give me a week and I'll tell you for sure. And then we lay ground rules. For example, like she can't start until I find someone. Okay. For example. Okay. Because I, I could, she could have 50 people by now and I still will have no one. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but you're open to, Guys, too? No. Okay. Guys are gross. No offense. No, not you. No, her with her. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, me. I'm no, like, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, no, ew. Um, <laughs> ew. I don't know. I mean, with, with me around, I'm pretty sure she's sick of guys in general. But, yeah, she would probably wouldn't say no to a guy, to a beautiful man or something. Um, I, didn't tell, I didn't tell her, like, stay with only with girls because that's very hypocritical if I do that. So I, I didn't say that, and nor would I be jealous about that as long as, she, again, she, if, if she's fine with whoever I find out there. Um, yeah. Because I'm into, like, fucking orgies. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote right there for outtakes. Because I'm into fucking orgies. <laughs> yeah, I'm into, not, I don't want to say crazy shit. Crazy, depending on the person you're talking to. Very normal and plain compared to others. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like insane about it, but I am looking for new things. Definitely new people, new new experiences, new stuff. Um, I kind of have like an open book nature on my profiles, I guess. And I'm trying to understand the young crowd, but Jesus, I really don't. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I really don't. You just have to uh, talk to them in text talk. G I know. I OMG, IKR? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's emojis now. Everything's emojis. <laughs> yeah, a green plant means they smoke a lot of weed. They probably expect you to have some weed, which means I don't have that. Um, I could, actually. I could if I wanted to, but I don't. Um, you know, like the money one, they expect probably like a daddy, like a sugar daddy type deal. And uh, I don't want that. No. We don't want to pay for anything. Um, just for the gas that takes me to there or anything. 
<laughs> we, have, we have rules about like coming here as a last resort. Like we kind of go uh, every, at some the other person's place instead. Then okay. defiling the home here. That's what she would call it. I like that a lot, idea. A lot of a lot of rules. I mean, here to do it if we have to, like if there's no other place, but otherwise like a motel or something else. Yeah. Sock on the door sort of shit like college. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> wow. Shit like that. Yeah, there's other rules too, but those are the main ones. Yeah. And you're the first person I've told actually, that I know because oh, uh, uh, I just don't know how people will take it. And I don't want to, you know, I mean, I, you can say whatever you want, but I'm saying I can tell like the friends that will be cool with it, like the Robs and the Lukes, and they'll just say jokes and I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Um, they'll be cool with it. They'll understand. They'll be like, what? And then say jokes. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to deal with jokes right now. So I haven't told them. And obviously, I can't tell any family member uh, right, for yeah, obvious yeah. conservative reasons. Yeah, and I can't tell anyone at work because I don't. Well, I maybe know one of them that well, <laughs> and maybe I'll tell him. <laughs> you know, haven't even gone that far. But yeah, that's it. So, do you think this will bring your relationship closer? I have no idea. What if it goes the opposite way? It could very easily go the opposite way, and uh, we talked about that. Yeah, and we came to the conclusion, at least I did, and I think I got her to see the same thing I did was that we can't know for sure until something happens. You know, we can't know for sure until like I really go on my, on my first date or she goes on her whatever, you know, yeah. we, can't, we can't know for sure. It's like one of those things like you prepare for war, prepare for war. And then when it hits, you can still freeze up. You know, you don't know what you're going to act. Uh, there's a king for that. Right? Oh God. There is. There's a king for everything, Jay. Wow. Let's go. Uh, uh, I was talking to this one girl. Uh, online, I forget which whoops, which app it was, but um, she was into she was into a lot of the same stuff I like to, but she but her main thing was something I really don't like, and that's uh, like a foot fetish, and I'm like I'm just not I'm not into that at all. So I yeah. asked her like w in what fashion did like 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 your feet being worshipped or something, or is it the other way around? And she's like it's the other way around. I'm like oh okay, so really? I was, I was second thinking that I was giving it second thoughts because I'm like, okay, great. I don't have to put my a foot in my mouth or anything for this. But she she put my foot in her mouth. And I guess I can deal with that. <laughs> oh, that's so weird, dude. And I was like thinking about like, I guess I can deal with that. I guess I can handle the tickle factor. I can probably lower that. Um, but it never went anyway. She didn't answer me. A lot of people ghost each other too all the time. All the time. Ghost, 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 ghost. Oh, Every time someone whatever, or they forget, or they don't give a fuck, and just stop talking to them. They don't say, like, I ah, forget about it, or uh, we're not a good fit, I don't think, or whatever, but no one ever says that. No one has ever said that. Wow. Just done. Done. Just they don't respond. Ever. Cut it and move on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. God, I'm so glad I don't date or anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not really frustrated, because I still have Lexi. It's not like... <laughs> well, yeah, true, like, true. Yeah. But just the landscape has changed so dramatically. Jesus Christ. It really has. I mean, more so with uh, in your time and your, you know, when you last dated, because it's been longer for you than for me. Oh. But uh, but still, I mean, especially with this COVID, you can't go anywhere. You can't find anyone. You'd have to find them online. I'd see, I, don't, I didn't even think about that, you know. It's, 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 we really picked the worst time to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say. We picked the worst time to open it. Wow. Maybe not for her, but for me, for sure. Yeah, I I couldn't imagine doing it. And then when, you know, because we're not spring chickens. <laughs> Obviously, you're you're younger than me, but. We're autumn chickens. Yeah, we're, we're autumn chickens. It, the, you got to be careful because the women that are going to be out there are going to have baggage, man, because there's a reason mm -hmm. why they're single at an older age, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at 20-something-year-olds, too, though. A lot of them. Oh, okay. There, yeah, there you go. A lot of girls have a lot of daddy issues. Uh, perfect age for a lot of people. Wow. At that point. And I am looking at younger people overall. And mainly because I'm not, uh, I don't deny myself that version of, we all crave the younger, right? I'm not saying like too young or anything. I'm just saying the younger, whatever. Yeah. It's all part of the flesh thing, biological thing. And I don't suck. I don't like, I don't shy away from it. Um, I have looked, I have talked and looked at plenty of people my age, some older for sure, some cougars, I guess you would call 40 somethings. Yeah. Um, but, uh, a lot of them have their, their, yeah, you could say that they look like they have a bigger set of baggages and they, yeah, man. they were younger than their younger counterparts. Cause they usually stuck with kids along the way and, or they're, they just got divorced. Yeah. Uh, bad relationships, just right. you know, psycho ex-boyfriends or husbands and right. fuck that. Some of them, for sure, they seem that way. Others seem like they weigh, they, they look way too 
well adjusted. I'm like, what are you doing with her? Um, <laughs> what's what's the problem? Yeah, but also like that's judging too harshly that you should try and something out probably. They they probably don't say yes to most of anything. They probably just like waiting for that right yes to try to meet someone for real, you know, in which case that's not me anyway. Because a lot of them are looking for like a, a stable uh you know, connection with someone forever for the rest of their lives, even if they're 50 or 40 or 30 something. Yeah. But unfortunately, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for anything. I'm looking for once or twice at max. So nine times out of 10, the older crowd kind of like, I ignore them. Yeah. Because, or I not ignore them, but I, I don't pursue them. Yeah. They're looking not... for something more stable and I'm not there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be a daddy to someone else's kids. I mean, I've been there. Have you? Mm -hmm. Remember uh, Monica? We never met her, I don't think. I don't remember Monica. She had a kid. Um, The kid was like 11, and she was like 31 or something. No, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like 20, 21, and I made a lot of jokes about how my age is equal in difference to her kid as it is to her. Oh, oh. I think maybe maybe was a much younger guy so I wish you'd like younger guys. Just like guys like younger girls, same thing. Yeah. Um and yeah, we dated and I taught the girl how to roller skate. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Went to Navy Pier, you know, once. <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just one we dated for like if we even call it dating, I don't know what you call it. Um my my memory is kinda hazy. It's been so long. But I remember doing that for sure. I remember going on a few dates to parks with the kid, something obviously without the kid, just the mom sometimes. Uh yeah, that kind of thing. Mm. It was nice. The kid liked me. So it sucks for her because I have to I don't remember saying goodbye either. <laughs> and not that I don't know how that works. And I, I just don't remember saying goodbye. But she probably was at school at the time. Um, who knows? But yeah. Wow. Yeah, and we worked together. That was a, that was the last time I, I did a co worker because I was like, I was like, nah, this is too much trouble for co workers. I can't see someone that I'm working with. Yeah. So I made that a personal rule. Wow. Um, you like this little story today. I was talking to someone. Um, a lot of people put their Snapchat or Instagram accounts on their profiles on some of these sites. Okay. So they'll, they'll be like, I rarely check this. Just message, message me here, which I don't like doing. I've done it a few times. I just don't like doing it in general. I'm like, can't you just fucking go on the fucking. <laughs> like, what's the fucking point? Sorry. So I just, you know, that's that's me being old though. That's just not me understanding the young mind, you know. I guess. So um so I messaged one today and then she accepted my friend request on Snapchat. And very yummy Asian thing, by the way. Mm-hmm. And um and then I uh she didn't respond to me personally, but she accepted my friend request after I said, like, hey, I saw you on this website or whatever that I'm in and like um pretty much match with what you were saying on there, something like that. I don't remember what it said. I said it chiller than that. And she responded. She didn't respond, but she accepted my friend request. And then I checked her story. That's how you can see Snapchat, like previous posts. Yeah. And uh, she has her availability pretty open to you can see almost all of her posts and stuff like that. And then I saw a lot of salacious, awesome videos and little like little videos and pictures of her and outfits and doing God knows what, as you can imagine. Yeah. And then I saw in one of them like the the different services she accepts for payment. I'm like, oh fuck you. Oh no. She's like, I accept Google Payment and some other one and uh, PayPal. Uh, she, I mean, I, she didn't ask me to write. This is just on her Snapchat feed. Right. But I assume that's what she's going for. And maybe she's just selling pictures or something stupid. I don't know what she's doing. But like either way, I'm like, oh, no, this is not real. She's hooking in some form. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible dating landscape. Jesus. Yep. That was today. Good thing you, you guys – made that agreement where you don't start until the other one's ready to start, you know? Yeah, that was more, that was more for my like, sanity. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I imagine it's a hell of a lot easier for, for women. Yeah, but it's also like it, they have different difficulties. They have different problems. Like what? Like I'm pretty sure I can protect myself. Pretty sure she can't. <laughs> oh, you mean like when physically yeah. you, I you don't see. know. You don't know who you're meeting. They, that's a real legit issue with women in general about a lot of things that have nothing to do with dating or sex sure, or no, anything. Sure, sure. So imagine adding sex and dating to the mix. It's probably more of an issue and more of a security measure they have to undertake. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's the different levels of consent that go along with it, different levels of like 
knowing what they know, make sure they don't know anything beyond your phone number, maybe, or not knowing your last name. All this stuff goes into it, but you have to know theirs, and you have to, like, maybe take a photo of their ID to make sure that they don't recognize wow. you. I mean, these are things that I know that Lexi's thinking of, and now I was thinking of, and I'm sure others are. And uh, and not even that aspect, like, even that, like, you take it down to, like, let's say all that's good. Superficial, more or less. Pitfalls for women might be, you know, like, not choosing the right guy, but choosing a guy who isn't fucking lying. Yeah. about what they want or being pretty for about what they want and will actually do that or not do that um because you know again it's all i mean and you probably have to meet with them several times like in parks or public places several times maybe before you actually do anything because you don't know who you're going with right all this stuff yeah. whereas me I, i'm not saying i can do that the same because for all i know i could be walking into a house full of guys waiting to rob me that could happen too Jesus a lot less Christ. likely, a lot less likely for that to happen with me than it is for her. Eww. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Man. But I've done this before. I've told you stories, right? Of going to some of these things? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like house and parties. I would tell yeah. you the precautions I used to take. No. I mean, I still will do them. Like, like for example, let's say um, um, I'm directed to uh, uh, an address that's... um in a residential neighborhood, right? You know, cause it's a house or it's an apartment, whatever it is. I park always a block away, maybe the next block over, and I walk over no matter what the weather is, mm. for obvious reasons. I leave everything in the car behind. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Except for, except for my ID because they also might require proof. So I keep that. And I put my, I keep my phone too because I, I can't not have my phone. That's the one thing that sucks. And But I, I make sure the security measures are on it. I take my face ID off or would now. Because uh, when I dated last, there was no face ID on the phones. Um, so anyway, and then I would go in there like that. I wouldn't even I thought about the face ID thing. Yeah, I make sure I have no wallet, no money, no nothing like that. No credit cards, nothing like that. Wow. Ever. For obvious reasons. Man. Yeah, I wouldn't even thought of that. No, no, I think of all that. And I ask questions too. Like I check their ID no matter if they look 18 or over. I want to make sure. Uh, things like that. You know. I just walk in. You know, I'm here for the gangbang. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that's smart, man. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, and if I ever have to give someone an address here, um, I always give them an address that's a block away at least. You know, and when they're nearby, I tell them to text me when they're nearby, and I will walk over to that fake address and I will walk uh, them back to the house, away from their car, in case someone's in the car. Wow. Yeah. If that would happen, obviously. Man, it's almost not even, I don't know. I would do that, yes. I would do that for, you know, just for my mental or whatever. Yeah. I, a lot of people don't do that, though. I met people, girls, who I could have been anyone, and they didn't follow any of that. And they're, I mean, they're fine because they met me, and I'm not, I'm not a killer or a <laughs> Yeah. Right. Or I didn't care about them that way, um, just in other ways. And, um, yeah, and we, we did fine. I think it was great. It worked out, but they just walked in. You know, they just came, or they just did what I said or whatever, you know, it's crazy. Man. And I do think about that. Sometimes, I, but I don't want to break the fourth wall and tell them like, hey, why are you here? Like, I'm not going to ask them like, hey, what sit them you? down and teach yeah, them the way to, to, let me to tell date. You, let me tell you how people get turned off faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but even all that, you can't know for sure. You know how hackers work, but hackers wouldn't be personally there. So this isn't like a horror movie either, you know. But it is how every horror movie starts. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I play the odds on that, I guess. I think I figured out what was going on. Oh. Those that those blink cameras, the newest ones, which that kitchen one is, they do this thing well where they'll take a snapshot once or twice a day. I think mine was set to two times a day. It'll take a snapshot just of whatever's happening at that time, boom, it takes a snapshot, it takes a snapshot. And then at the end of a week, it stitches all those snapshots together and it puts it into a movie for you. Why that feature is useful, I can't figure it out. But what I noticed. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So I turned it off since because I can't, like I said, figure out a, a logical reason why that would be helpful. But I knew something was funny when I noticed a piece of paper on the fridge wasn't there in the beginning of the video then it was there and then it was gone again 
Uh, and I'm like, oh, and, and it also happened to a cup next to the sink. It wasn't there, and then boom, it was there, and then boom, it was gone. So I'm like, okay, either <laughs> there's some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life going on in my house, or there's something <laughs> going on with this camera mm-hmm. that that I don't know about. So I did so the it's research. Been disproven. Got it. Yeah. And and that flash of light coming through my back window mm-hmm. was actually the camera taking a single photo at sunrise. Of course. That light that that light that turned on in my office probably was me going into my in my office turning the light on at that that one time it took the photo or or it was just my office light was on when it decided to take the photo. Right. Although but, doesn't that doesn't that give you an insight as to how little your house changes day to day? So you have to look at <laughs> walls on uh, a note on the fridge and a cup on us on the counter to yeah. notice the differences. Where like here, it's a constant revolving of <laughs> furniture <laughs> and like, laundry bins and yeah, that's, it yeah, yeah, that's true. But that's that's what it is, and I don't know what that feature is good for. So I just turned uh, I turned it off because yeah. when the camera was new, I turned on all the features. I'm like, yeah, let's let it run, let it rip. Mm-hmm. But I think that's exactly what happened, and then it stitched it, it all into a movie. That was that was Brian's problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then when it stitches it into a movie, it looks like there's some weird shit going on. But right, the the okay. cup and the paper gave it Got away. It. If the cup and the paper weren't there, I would have never. That's, yeah, we never know. I never would have figured that out. Wow. So, I just I don't want to. I don't oh, want to yeah. cover it and then have patrons write in and be like you idiot it's this you know i have the same camera or something well also we don't want to be also disingenuous about it no we right. figured it out it's great that we figured it out i mean yeah it would have sucked for sure if we did it not knowing that first yeah uh, but the, the, at least that would have been like a, a harm an honest mea culpa versus uh now that we know we definitely shouldn't do it right um, <laughs> and, and the one where it looked like there was someone in my office i think it was me literally sitting in my office uh yeah working late yeah. Right, and it just happened to take the picture probably at that moment. With me. Probably, yeah, probably. That's wild. All right, well, mystery solved. You know, mystery solved. It's, it's good. No aliens, no haunted shit. <laughs> I guess ultimately the the end result disappointing to bonus fans, but good thing for your house and your yes mentality, for our your sanity. Because yeah. I'm telling you, Katie, the because I showed Talia too. She was freaked out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I was freaked out, and I don't fucking live there. <laughs> I was just more like, wow, cool. What, what does it mean? But uh, Katie was a little freaked out. Tyler was really freaked out. Yeah. 